we just pushed out a really big update to the Mac Store Kit plugin, and I wanted to make a quick video to show you some of the new features in it. Now, the most important one is that it uses the exact same API as the iOS version. So if you have both versions of the plugin now, it uh, your code can be 100% identical. All the events are the same. All the methods are the same. Uh, now there are a couple extra methods specific to the Mac App Store, but um, those are completely uh, voluntary. You don't have to use them. So uh, we're going to go through a, a real quick run through here showing you uh, what's changed. So uh, the demo scene now is uh, the exact same code between iOS and Mac. Uh, you can see Mac has a couple uh, couple here. Actually, let me just maximize this so we can read it. Uh, there's a couple extra buttons here like um, fetch in-app purchase receipts, which actually opens the receipt file that's in your app bundle and grabs the in-app purchases out of it for you. You can remotely validate the App Store receipt, which actually grabs the receipt, uploads it to Apple servers, and gets back a bunch of information about it. And uh, you can do a validation on the uh, computer itself here with this uh, validate App Store receipt method. Now, um, those are just some added benefits. They're um, you know, obviously not required for StoreKit, but just, uh, just there to get you guys going. Okay, so uh, if you're using both the iOS and the Mac version, uh, there, it's important that you follow uh, these steps. You, know, you want to import the iOS version first, then import the Mac version. And uh, you want to open up the StoreKit binding file here, and you'll see it commented out on the top is enable iOS. So you'll just uncomment it. That's it. That's all it takes to get them both functioning together on both platforms. Okay, so uh, we also, this is the, like I said, has our Mac App Store signing tool. So we're going to go ahead and show you how this works. So first off, when you're testing StoreKit, you must have the Mac App Store validation checked. This is a requirement. If your app bundle does not have a receipt in it, you can't connect to the StoreKit servers and you cannot test in-app purchases at all. So we're going to check this box here and leave that like that. So uh, first step is to build it. So we're going to build the app. And we're going to pop this on a different space and let's have a look in here. So if we uh, show the package contents, we can see there's no receipt in here and there's no code signature. So this app is not signed and it has no receipt. It will not work if we try to use it with StoreKit. So this is where our signing tool comes in. Now previously you would have had to sign any apps from the command line or through some custom script, but we made a little uh, tool here for you. So you'll see the Launch Mac App Store helper here. And first thing it asks you for is to locate your app. It's great. We'll find the app. So it's going to find all of the provisioning profiles on your computer. And uh, you'll be able to just select them from a drop down. Now, it's important that you sign not with the development. You can't sign with your development certificate. In order for the Mac App Store to give you a receipt, you have to sign with a production uh, profile. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the production profile. It'll automatically fill in this information here for you. And you can pick your application category, which isn't really important right now because we're not submitting it to the App Store. Click the Sign button, and there you go, it's signed. Now, if you were uploading to the, the Mac App Store, you can actually package it right now as well by just clicking the Package button, but we're not going to be doing that. Okay, so now we go back over here, and this is signed, so we should be able to double-click it and open it, and this is how you know it's signed. We have to sign into the Mac App Store in order to be able to launch the app. Now, it's important that you use test users, so use test user set up in iTunes Connect. Now, this is a test user that uh, you know, I'm going to be logging in here with, so if all goes well, it'll open up our app. Great, so let's have a look in that app bundle again. So now that we've signed it, we have a code signature, and now that we've launched it and uh, entered our information correct, we have a proper receipt in here. So that's good. That's all that was required for testing in-app purchases. Now we can, uh, we can actually just slide this off here, and you can see can make payments, standard, uh, just like the iOS version. And uh, what we can do here is do uh, actual true validation on the Mac App Store receipt. And you can see it's coming back true. And uh, this does more than just check its existence. It actually opens the file up and makes sure that it's valid. And uh, we can also remotely validate the App Store receipt. This actually takes it, uploads it to Apple servers, 
and you can see it dumps a whole bunch of information that it gets back from Apple, uh, and and you can uh, you know just verify that it's correct there. Okay, so before we can make any payments or purchase anything, we actually need to retrieve the product data. So we click the get product data button, and you can see we receive two products and. You know, this is just dumping the info to the console, but we have uh, consume, uh, good job spelling there. And uh, then we have non-consume over here. So we have two products, and we have uh, the button shows up now that we have some products that we can do a purchase. So let's purchase a random product, and do you want to buy one consume? Sure, let's buy it. Important piece of information here is if you're in full screen mode, and you go to purchase a product, this prompt will appear behind the Unity window. So drop back to windowed mode before doing any purchases, and then once the purchase is complete, you can go back to full screen mode. So let's sign in, we'll have a look. Okay, we've already purchased it, uh, probably purchased it a thousand times. So let's just click OK, and you can see we get the purchase product result, or event firing, and it has the information on the product. So now that that purchase is successful, we can actually use the Fetch in-app purchase receipts button. What this will do is open up the receipt, the actual receipt file, and parse out all of the in-app purchases and uh, let you take a look at them. And you can see we have that uh, piece that we just bought a, a couple minutes ago. All right, that's it. That's all there is to it. So uh, hopefully we've, uh, we've made the workflow of getting a Mac app signed and set up and ready for in-app purchases easy enough for you guys. Thanks for watching.